Hey beautiful humans, how are we? We are here today. Christmas time is happening and we love <laughs> having <laughs> we love having um, friends around and we were literally just having a delicious conversation. Um, and recently I've been chatting with some clients that we're working with, but also I've been in some really interesting rooms where the biggest topic of conversation for a lot of people has been I don't have many friends. I don't know how to get a social life. I don't have a social life. Maybe some people have been away in a closet or they've been, you know, playing it really small and they've lost that essence. They've lost that ability to connect, to communicate. Um, and we we're just having this chat and I was like, shh, get on the couch. Um, because this is a conversation that's super relevant to a lot of people. Um, and I think this is the most important time to discuss this and it's, how do you go from having no social life? Maybe this is young mums. Maybe this is some of the young men and women that we know are out there who have had really rough lives and are at a precipice point, a point of turning where they're like, I want a better life. I want to do and be better things. I want to step up in the world, but I don't know how. So I'm really urging all of you, if you know someone or you are someone like that, I'm going to ask Wes some questions because Wes would say to all of you that 18 months ago, he actually had been spent his whole life just working. He'd spent his whole life trying to succeed, his whole life doing the good boy act, whole life just showing up to please society, to please whomever, and lost himself along the way, but obviously got to some kind of a point where he went, I want more. And how do you start that? Like a lot of you I know are just sitting there going, I don't even know how to begin, let alone get out there and have a social life. So where's just really quickly give us a thing of what you got to at that point, what your heart moment was, and what made you change. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, first thing I would um, start with, right, is just owning your state. I mean, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a person who really likes to um, uh, ha ha have, an, have an open view on life and, 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 and listen and see little things, right? And I really picked up around social circles, right, you're sort of coming from a place of three places, right? The first thing is, right, you're already choosing to be a loser or, you know, choosing no self-worth, you know, the world hates me, all that kind of stuff, right? So you're just empty inside, so you don't know what, 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 what to give. The next one is, right, that you're emotionally damaged. You know, you could be coming out of a, a whole relationship or you've moved from a, a hometown, you've been in years and this is a new era for you, um, that kind of thing. And the next thing is, right, is that you, um, you're seeking validation, you know, that, that could be, you know, from a whole lot of areas. And so, first, you know, first I would, you know, would say, you know, it's just really acknowledging owning your state where you're at, and then look, looking at that place right, and going, okay, what can I just do on a, a, um, a small step, right, a little bit out of my own comfort zone with a little bit different intent. And so, I, I sort of role played with that a little bit, and I just found that um, just, Jarring with that, right? It really gave me a space, and and I was able to, you know, meet and invite and build build some great relationships from that. One thing I've noticed with you, Wes, is especially with us and something that we speak about a lot is when you get invited to things. A lot of people go, oh, you know what? I'm a bit tired, or oh, I can't be bothered, or whatever it might be. There's actually a rule of thumb, isn't there? Where if you actually get invited to something and you say no, you actually have to say yes the next time, or else, as a rule of thumb. You stop getting invited to things, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I've noticed that a lot of people perpetuate a cycle. They want to be out into the world and want to be doing more things, but then that negativity gets to them. Oh, what if they don't like me? What if this? What if that? What if this? The thing is, what I found is the right people will find you, and you're not wasting your time with the people that you don't like. You don't necessarily resonate with those people anyway. So a big part is stepping out of your comfort zone, mm. moving into into a new place. You want something new. You're not going to find it in the same place. Correct. Yeah, and so one thing we've noticed with Wes is Wes is incredible at showing up at events. He's incredible at connecting with people. And he probably took a lot of the stuff he used in the business world and used that in your social life, right? Yes, yeah. Yep. With coaching, yeah. With coaching, yeah. Okay, so, so did you use some of your analytics and some of your, your... What would you have used from your days of just working, working, working? How did you apply that to your social life? Um, well, big, big, big thing for me, you know, questions or answers. I mean, um, I, I find, you know, instead of, you know, like um, just talking, right, or, you know, or just saying, you know, how your day is, you know, you use questions which, which are open conversation. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then the and the other thing I think you know I think we could go into next ride is that you've got to like find the fun in it. I mean, thank you. Got to find fun in stuff. Out out of fun, right? It's incredible. You know what 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 can um what what can come from that. Mm. I, I would say one of the things that I've noticed is quite often we're not aware of our words when we're around people. Then I say that for me. It's very in, interesting to pick up on social cues because sometimes we come out and even though you've had a shit day and you have this verbal dump when you go, oh, no, no, and people actually start tuning out. I know that I'm shocking for it. I tune out sometimes and it's just simply awareness of, ah, okay, I've gone too far and, it's, and it happens to all of us. But just to rein it in, sometimes it's better to have a little so bit more So watch the social cues from other people. 100%, yeah. yeah. So tuning in and tuning into other people's energy. Are people glazing their eyes open? Are people actually looking for an escape? Are they looking around the room at other people and other situations begging for something to come in and interject? Yeah. Be aware of those things and be willing to, as soon as that happens, come back to, what's the question I can ask this person that's going to get them engaged? And as Clint said too, you know, the, the, the dumb too, you know, um, just learn to listen. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of us just don't know how to stop and to have patience, right, and just absorb someone. Yeah. I mean, mm. that's, a, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big um, positive too when you, you know, learning to engage in new environments too, is just learning to listen. Because then out of listening, right, you can get to know someone, right, and you'd be amazed the opportunity you'll find you know, just to serve upon that person or to love upon that person or do something mm. that, you know, that, that could be a little bit unique where you go, well, fuck, you know, they will really feel recognised. So what would you say your challenge is right now, Wes? And I'm, I'm going to bring it back to health. What is your challenge right now? <laughs> What's my challenge right now? Um, my challenge right now, yeah, probably is, 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 is life balance, um, mm. routine, mm. you know, coming... To a sense of priority, but it's a priority, right, which is more up level. So then, it's that, then you, when you really get to the point of, um, of doing all of this, and suddenly, Wes is the king of parties. Like, Wes is invited to everything. I watch my social media, and every one of the people in my network knows Wes somehow. Because he got out there and he got to meet people. And Wes is charming. He's someone who doesn't take over conversations. He asks for permission before he offers any advice. He's one of those people that you just kind of go, holy dooly, this guy actually gets it. Um, so I would say is once you get to that level, you've got to balance your health out. So then it comes back. So I urge all of you to definitely take on board what Wes has said and really tune to the fact that if you're sitting at home and you're wishing, if you, are you watching someone else's social media and, and wishing you had their life or their health or their body or their emotions or their relationship? Chances are, sitting behind your screen, you're not going to get it. Wishing, watching, and and creeping around the edges of life are not going to get you anything. You actually have to take your shoes and put them inside of the event and start doing the walk, talking the talk, and ensuring that you're showing up effectively, um, and then making sure you find balance. Yes. Yes. It's interesting you say that about stepping back from... I'll get back. Keep going. What's that? Stepping back and watching actually what's going on. A lot of people want this massive amount of change and to upgrade and elevate their life. Mm-hmm. And if you're sitting in depression, people don't necessarily want to spend time with a, with a depressed person. Now, I'm not going to go right into the mental health side of things, but sometimes it is a choice. If you want to change your life, you might have to go, you know what, today I'm just going to put on my big boy panties and just go out and have a good time, put a sm- force a smile. And what you'll find is if you force a smile, you'll be able to slip in and uh, find something a little better. That's what I've found for me. Because not every day I am in the best mood to go out. But I go, you know what? I'm actually gonna go out, I'm gonna put an effort in, I'm gonna put a smile on. And just by forcing myself to do that, and it's well and truly out of your comfort zone, if you are feeling down, don't get me wrong, it actually slips into a state, and all of a sudden you are having fun. You don't even realize you're having fun, but the world around you changes. And if you change the way that you look at things, the world you look at changes. And one other thing I'd say too is, when uh, Sean asked that question too, when it's when you're at a high and, you, and it's happening all the time, I found I came to a place where I fell into FOMO too. I never wanted to miss out, mm. so I, I would do three five day banders, you know, and not 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 sleep because I <laughs> did not want to miss out. Yeah. And see, so that's the next thing is too is right, you know, it's it's okay not to get to everything either. Yeah. You know, there's always it's always going to be on, on again. But it's better to have options than not have options. If you're someone who's sitting there going, but I don't get invited and I'm not getting included and I'm not being thought about, 
guess what? People are busy and they've got their own stuff going on. You need to become inclusive and you need to become someone who is approachable. So get out there and start talking. Get out there and start getting involved. Don't sit there and expect it to come to you. You have to do that work. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was my response just to life balance. Mm. Not, 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 you know, when you're starting out. Yeah, well, yeah. One thing I would say with balance and what I've noticed in myself and I've seen it in a few other people, so you've got to notice it in yourself first, is when you become rigid of... I've got this and that to do, and quite often there is a great amount of things you can do to hold yourself accountable. Like for me, um, yoga practice every day was this is something I've got to do for my back, for my mental state, for this, that, and the other. Being rigid that I have to do it actually left me in a state quite often of going, shit, I'm running out of time, I'm trying to fit all these things in, and I'm in overwhelm. So it made life quite difficult to actually try and fit absolutely everything in. Whereas sometimes, if you go, you know what, today not doing that practice or not going to that party, it serves me best to do this. So finding a balance of going, you know what, so I was really hoping to do my yoga practice today or go to the gym or to whatever you actually had to do. But there's an opportunity here, and I said it to a friend of ours the other day, I said, there's an opportunity here that your rigid mind's not allowing you to have because you're going to go to the gym and you've got a perfect opportunity where all of us are having a great time hanging out on the beach. Sometimes... It's great to just go, you know what, we're going to go with the flow and see what happens here. Mm. If I don't make it to the gym, guess what, there's tomorrow. Mm. And my point there is, if you're rigid in the mind, you're going to be rigid in the body and rigid in your life, and it's not necessarily an attractive quality, quality to have. Cool, cool. And then we want to throw something else in there, guys, which you know really uh, was a, a big revelation for me, right? This is probably a little bit of timeline stuff. It's really um, acknowledging, you know, where, where, where you focus, if your focus you know, is present on the, the, the now, the present, the future or the past. And it's really, really interesting when you get to know what, what those foundations are. So when you're in the now and present, right, like I was talking about, you know, owning your state, out of that state, right, you really get to know what your true gratitude is mm-hmm. and what your true thankfulness is and what can build on that. Because if you don't, if you're not happy with the now and who you are, what happens is, right, you'll look forth to go back to the past or the future. And the past, right, is failure. You know, the past is, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the world owes you something different, right? You know, you're, you're looking to the future, right, and you're forever anxious, hopeful, you know? You're, 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 in, a, you're in a dream state. Mm. You know, there's the, the, these two, you know, seesaw opportunities don't get you anywhere. But you know, the more that you can get present and just own the state and do the best you can, and like I said before, try and have the best fun with that, I tell you what, your, your, your wholeness and who you are will, will, will grow into that, and what will happen is the now, the past, the future will become one. Mm. Yeah, thanks guys, that's awesome. Perfect. I just felt like there was this was a message that so many people potentially needed right now. Um, from our hearts to yours, we see the potential in each and every one of you and I hope this touches you and I hope if you know of someone else of whom might have been struggling at some point like this, I hope you share this video, I hope you pass this on to someone because this isn't outside of anyone else's scope. This is possible for each and every one of you. No one is ever um, no one is ever not enough to have friends. No one is ever not enough to have a social life. And guess what? Social lives don't have to cost you a lot of money if you choose to. Get creative. Start asking questions, start asking how you can be involved and how you can help or how you can work with each other. When you do that, um, a lot is possible. So thank you so much, guys. Share this with everybody. We love you. Peace out.